love air. Come on in, because today is a great show on Army Air Force wings. And not only are you going to get to see all of the wings of World War II for the United States Army Air Force, but you're going to get to see a couple of the rarest, and you're going to get to see two illegal wings that the airmen awarded themselves for special circumstances. <laughs> Oh, good to have you with us today for our show on the Army Air Force Wings of World War II. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's going to have some unique wings for you to see. I'm Frank Foster, your host, and I'd like to point out that the first set of qualification badges for Army aviators was in 1913, and it was a beautiful gold emblem, and it was an award, not a qualification badge and it had a little tablet that said military aviator, and below that was an American ball eagle in a dive holding two cross signal corps flags. And uh, to qualify for that award, you had to fly above 2,500 feet. <laughs> uh, pretty exciting. Well, in those aircraft, it was exciting. And by 1921, the Army Air Force had four wings. It had pilot wings, it had a balloon pilot wing, it had airship pilot wings and balloon observer wings. But we want to talk about the wings of 1942 and on. And uh, as a unique, unique opportunity, you're going to get to see a set of wings that I believe is only one pair of in existence. And you'll see another set of wings, which only two men, to the best of my knowledge, have ever qualified for. So, we're going to have a good look, and I think you'll enjoy the show. Uh, by the way, special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain Inn, South Carolina, for providing all of the wings you're going to see, and the Medals of America Press for the information. Okay, let's go and take a look. Before we look at the Army Air Force wings of World War II, let me mention a couple of things. Many air crew members during World War II were authorized more than one set of wings, but they could only wear one set of wings. The Army Air Force and the U.S. Air Force wings have always been worn on the left breast of the uniform, while wings awarded by foreign nations are worn on the right breast, and I'll show you an example of the foreign wings as we go on. Air crew members have always had to meet certain established criteria to wear the wings for a particular air crew position. So, Let's take a look at the very first of the air crew wings, the pilot wings. The standard design of pilot wings that remain in use today were introduced in January of 1919 as the Airplane Pilot's Badge. The centerpiece of the wing is the Federal Shield, which has been the symbol of the United States since its early history. To be awarded these wings initially required not less than 200 hours of flying time and not less than 75 hours of solo time. It was redesignated as a pilot's badge in 1940, and the badge is made of oxidized silver and measures three and a quarter inches across. Two-inch wings were authorized for wear on some shirts, but they were hardly ever worn by the Army Air Force. Sterling wings were common during World War II, but gradually disappeared after the war because of the expense. To be awarded the wings in the Army Air Force, the individual pilot must have completed Army Air Force pilot training or have been recommended by a board of officers because of previous qualifications. There are some gold-colored pilot's wings out there, and these were occasionally worn by instructor pilots. Here's a nice display using the pilot wings as a focal point over the decorations of an Army Air Force pilot. And on the right is a picture of Lieutenant Colonel Walter Holmes wearing his pilot wings, the Silver Star, the DFC, the Purple Heart, the Air Medal, and Great Britain's Distinguished Flying Cross. This was probably around 1944-1945. The senior pilot wings shown here were instituted in 1937 as the military airplane pilot. The original criteria for the senior rating was at least 12 years of pilot experience with a minimum of 2,000 flying hours. In 1940, the badge designation was changed from military airplane pilot to senior pilot, and during World War II, the requirements were changed to 1,500 hours of flying time and five years experience as a pilot. The handsome command pilot wings were authorized in 1941. It is the same design as the senior pilot wings, but has a reef encircling the star. 
Initial criteria for this rating was 15 years of flying service and 2,000 flying hours. Here's a really nice example of command pilot wings as a focal point of this senior officer's medal display. And you can see how handsome these wings are and really how big they are. They're 3 and 1 8 inches wide. And here's a nice display where a pilot uses his pilot wings over his distinguished flying cross from service in World War II. And I want to take just a moment here and mention an unusual set of wings that you would occasionally see. And these are the Air Transport Command wings. In this case, a command pilot of Air Transport Command. And you say, why are you showing me this with the Army Air Force? Well, these were the wings that were the pilots that flew the President occasionally. I mentioned earlier that U.S. Army Air Force pilots could be awarded foreign pilot badges. And here's a good example the Chinese Nationalist Pilots Badge. Here's a good example. This pilot who served with the 14th Air Force was awarded both his U.S. Army Air Force wings and he has a set of Chinese Nationalist Pilot wings. And he's mounted them over his medals from his service in the Pacific Theater with the 14th Air Force in World War II. The Army Air Force Navigator Wings are shown here. They were established in September of 1942, and the Navigator Rating was awarded to graduates of the Army Air Force Aerial Navigation Course. The center of the wing is unusual in that it is an armillary spear, which is an ancient astronomical instrument. I didn't know that. This neat set of wings are bombardier wings, and they were authorized in 1942. It depicts a bomb falling on a target. The same emblem used as an earlier annual Distinguished Bomber Award. To be awarded this badge, the air crew member must have been a graduate of the Army Air Force Bombardier Training Program. These are the enlisted air crew member wings, and they were authorized in 1942 and initially given to various air crew positions, including gunners, flight engineers, aerial photographers, and other positions. Many Army Air Force personnel had both enlisted air crew member wings and their specialty wings, such as gunner wings, but only one pair of the wings could be worn at a time. Now, I'll show you some display cases where both set of wings are exhibited. But in most cases, Army Air Force personnel who did have both wings wore their specialty wings, such as the Aerial Gunner Badge. The Aerial Gunner Badge was awarded in 1943, and it was to recognize the training and hazardous duty of machine gunners on B-17s or B-24s, B-25s, B-26s, and B-29s. It's a Standard Observer's Badge with a winged bullet in the center. And the Air Force continued to award it up until 1953. Here's a nice example of a sergeant who served as an aerial gunner in the 8th Army Air Force in Europe. You can see his aerial gunner wings over his enlisted air crew member wings. And you can see below his air medal and his good conduct medal and his other service medals. A really nice display. And here's a good-looking display where the airman uses the enlisted air crew member wings over his Distinguished Flying Cross Air Medal and other ribbons, and you can tell that he served in the Pacific Theater. And yes, there are senior enlisted air crew member wings, as shown by this very nice example, where they're mounted over an air medal. When it came to displaying their wings, most aerial gunners would wear their aerial gunner badge over their enlisted air crew member wings, as shown here, where this sergeant of the 8th Air Force has his aerial gunner wings displayed over his enlisted air crew member wings, which are above his medals, such as the Purple Heart, the Air Medal, and the Good Conduct Medal, etc. Here's a unique display of a member of the 9th Air Force who has his aerial gunner wings over his enlisted air crew wings. And you can tell that he was shot down and captured by the Germans because he's got, well, he's got his Thalog tag mounted in his case underneath a handmade parachute badge. He also has the Air Medal, the Prisoner of War Medal, and below his medals is a Mechanics Badge, which is, well, I'll show you an example of what it looks like. Here's a better view of the badge, and it also has a uh, bars on it for a turret mechanic and for a machine gunner repairman. This may be the rarest of all pilot badges that you'll ever see. It's a handmade pilot badge which says POW Stalag Luf 
number one, and it includes half of his Thylog identification badge. <laughs> Very unusual. Two other unusual and unauthorized wings were the flying boot, and this was a symbol of airmen who were shot down and were able to make it back to their base. Sometimes they would walk all the way through France to Spain and then return to their base. It was originally developed by the RAF Desert Air Force. The pilots were shot down and were able to walk back through the desert, but it also was adopted by members of the 8th Air Force and became a unique individual unauthorized decoration which they wore on the underside of their lapel. There was another unique badge called the Flying Fish. It was also unauthorized but worn underneath the lapel of their uh, uniform and that was for airmen that were shot down and rescued from the ocean. These are flight engineer wings, and you don't see them too often because they weren't authorized until June of 1945, and they were awarded to crew members who performed flight engineer functions. Because of the timing of the authorization of the wings at the end of World War II, many air crew members never received award the flight engineer wings. The wings were worn for only about five years after they were authorized and were primarily for uh, B-29 flight engineers. At the center of the wing is the front bank of a nine cylinders of a stylized aircraft engine surmounted by a four-bladed propeller. Here's a very nice example of a display with the flight engineer wings shown over the Purple Heart and the Good Conduct Medal. And you will also note that there's a picture of his B-29 up above as well as several other interesting patches that he's put together. Uh, really a nice display. It's a really one of a few times I've ever seen the flying engineer wings in a display. This is an interesting set of wings, the Technical Observer Wings, and they were authorized in 1941. And these wings were awarded to officers who were rated as pilots or balloon pilots and who were certified by their commander as qualified to perform technical observation duties. Don't ask me more than that. The big L in the center of these wings give you a clue that it, they're for liaison pilots and they were authorized in 1942 and they were dropped almost shortly thereafter to obtain the rating the pilots had to fly the small lightweight aircraft. Their primary duty was to perform as artillery spotters in aircraft such as L4s and L5s and other duties included messengers, couriers, ferry, utility and reconnaissance flights. They were assigned for qualifications. Well, actually, the qualifications were restricted to liaison-type aircraft of 190 horsepower. There's no senior version of this rating badge. Combat Observer, Aircraft Observer wings are shown here. This was established really in 1921 and discontinued in 1949. Um, it was renamed Aircraft Observer in 1941 and was usually issued to graduates of the Bombardier School and Navigator School until the Bombardier Wings and the Navigator Wings were introduced. Also, a senior Aircraft Observer Wings that were awarded for those who'd flown at least 500 hours in that position. These unique wings with an S in the center were service pilot wings and they were established in 1942 and they were awarded to qualified pilots with previous civilian experience who were recommended to fly only transport, liaison, or other non-combat aircraft outside a theater of operation. And these were pilots that did, well, flying instructors, ferry pilots, transport, cargo pilots, messengers, courier service. Uh, the qualifications were at least 300 flying hours, of which 200 had to be solo. These pilot wings with a big G in the middle stand for glider pilot wings and they were established in 1942 and they were awarded to graduates of an advanced course in glider pilot training. <laughs> now, these pilots got the rating by completing three hours of glider flight time and 10 glider landings and then passing a test. Glider pilots were usually in the rank of staff sergeant or flight officer. And yes, these are balloon pilot wings that were awarded for completion of balloon pilots course in military airships or motorized balloons. In February of 1940, it was redesignated as a balloon pilot, and to be awarded the badge, an individual had to have five years as a rated balloon pilot or had flown at least 100 hours as a pilot in a military airship or motorized balloons.
who was also a senior balloon pilot wings with the star on top of the balloon, and that was awarded for at least a thousand hours of airship or motorized balloon flying. Yes, there were airship pilot wings. It was authorized originally in 1919 and awarded to graduates of the Air Corps Balloon and Airship School with not less than 200 hours of flying time. The rating was abolished in 1940, and less than 100 officers were authorized to wear the badge, but featured a dirigible in the center of oxidized silver wings. The very rarest of these wings, the senior airship pilot wings, were only awarded to two qualifying pilots, to the best of my knowledge. These are the Women's Air Force Service Pilot WASP wings. These wings became the official wings presented to graduates of the WASP school from 1943 onward. Initially, and I'll show you some examples of this in just a second, Wings with the training class numbers were imprinted on the shield and were presented prior to these wings becoming official. They were a little smaller than the regulation pilot wings and were similar to the pilot wings except the shield was replaced by the diamond design. And that represented the shield of Athena, the goddess of war. Here's an example of the training class numbers that were stamped on the original wings issued to the Women's Air Service. These are the uh, Army Air Force Flight Surgeant wings that were authorized in 1943, and the individual had to have been a civilian physician who qualified as an aviation medical examiner with one year of military service and 50 hours of flying time. The wings were initially gold in color and were changed to silver in 1944. The wing has a caduceus centered on the circular design in the center of the wing. There was also a set of wings for flight dental officers as shown here. In the last example of the over 20 Army Air Force wings, over well, flight nurse wings that were established in 1943 and awarded to women in the Army Nurses Corps who served at least six months in an Army Air Force hospital or nurses that served on board casualty evacuation aircraft such as a C-47 Goonie Bird. The original wings were gold, were later changed to silver in 44, and had an N in the center. The N could have been maroon with an edge of silver or just silver, and the wings were really only two inches in size, slightly smaller than the 3 and one h wings of all the Army Air Force males. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today for our show on the Army Air Force qualification wings of World War II. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did putting it together. And don't forget, give us a like and subscribe. That's going to keep us on the air. And uh, I hope you now know the difference between a pilot's badge and a navigator's badge. <laughs> All right, I'm Frank Foster. It was good to have you with us. Come and see us again on Veterans Medals Workshop.